Hey guys, welcome to Back Day. Today, Joey and I are gonna walk you through a pool day, but also kind of teach you how to structure your pool day. So, starting out today, we're gonna be going pull-ups. A good rule of thumb is put your skill movements first most of the time. So when I say skill, I mean exercises that are more technically challenging, usually less externally stabilized. So when I say external stability, I, I mean like um, a bench, a machine. We have to create more internal stability and have more coordination on a skill exercise. So for a pull-up, not much external stability, a lot of coordination involved. Usually technical failures gonna be our limiter there. So trying to prioritize how we're structuring our pool day, we're gonna put skill exercises first and then kind of go into our heavier output and then like isolation work. So it's called today the BBB, Build a Better Back Day. What we're gonna do is we're gonna help you guys build a better back. So build a better back day. We're gonna set up the workout, uh, give you guys some tips and tricks to help you set up a better back day. For us, this is gonna be our vertical pool day. Right, here's the real question. Joey, why should we be doing skill exercises if we wanna get bigger? Hey Nick, why should we be doing these? Oh well, skill exercises are gonna make us stronger typically. Did you right? want me to ask more you that coordination? Question? Yeah, I did, but you just Hey Nick. Flop. Yeah. Alley oop, Dwayne Wade to LeBron James. Oh, man. Dwayne Wade to LeBron James. Why are we doing a skill exercise on a day like today? I think most of the time it's worth keeping a more like skill-based exercise in or a more like strength-based exercise in. It's gonna give us a higher ceiling for loadability. So like we can get on a play load of machine or pin load of machine and eventually we're gonna max that out, we're gonna cap out pretty quick. Whereas things that are more like skillful in nature are usually gonna be more loadable. I have a super long runway for progression. So like barbell rows for back day, like a pull up. We don't have this in all the time. We have dumbbell rows in right now. But like most of the time, having something in that we can we can kind of push that strength adaptation has a higher like higher ceiling for loadability. Keep that in because it's gonna help us kind of build the engine, right? It's like we get stronger in absolute terms, we're gonna be able to get more output on our output exercises. So like for example, we were doing barbell RDLs for like three and a half months, and our seated hamstring curls went probably up like 30% in weight. And we got strong as shit on seated hamstring curls. Even though we weren't training any flexion on the RDLs, like our nervous system's ability to, to produce force got way better from keeping that in. So, although we may not be getting like super meaningful amounts of output at the beginning, like also as we get better at a skill exercise, like we're gonna kind of close the gap and go to get more output, get more of a mechanical potential stimulus from that. Um, also, just because there is technical limitations doesn't mean there's no hypertrophy at all. Like we're still getting tension. Yeah. So for our skill exercise, a lot of them are more compound in nature, and because they're more compound in nature, they're easily they're easier to progress and load. So for us, the more we load it, the more we can see some benefits on some of our other exercises that are a little bit more isolated in, in nature. All right, let's distinguish for a back day. What encompasses our back? Typically, we're gonna break it up into two main groups, right? like, like lat focus training, upper back focus training. So for lat focus training, there is gonna be like an adduction component so we can make like lat pull downs, pull ups, more so, the lat's probably a more dominant extender of the shoulder, so we'll kind of break that down when we get onto our, our lat output for the day. So, thinking lat, shoulder extension, upper back, we're thinking more like protraction and retraction. So all of our upper back muscles are attached to our scaps, our T-spine, so getting the shoulder blades to move around the rib cage. That'd be our main focus for upper back. So, we kind of distinguishing those two things, break it up that way, and then talk about like incorporating more vertical movements, more horizontal movements, that way we're not just you know, doing the same thing all the time. Hey guys, a few treats coming up for you. One, here in a few minutes, Joey's gonna explain to you what mid thoracic means. If you stick around long enough, I also hear Joey's taking his shirt off at the end, so we'll have to wait and see about that. I don't know what you said on the second part, but the first part, yeah. I... That's easy. You got eight, four, five, come on. Uh, training frequency wise, we probably want to try and hit everything like twice in a week. Um, if you are running like a bro split and you're training with adequate volume, that's probably gonna be okay too. But I'd say we're trying to maximize our back growth, try and hit everything twice in a week. So like lats twice a week, upper back twice a week, um, incorporating biceps in the pool day, biceps twice a week. Anything more than that, it's not gonna be like counterproductive per se, but like if we're training with super high intensity, we're probably not gonna be able to train like as frequent as like three or four times per week. But it's all just about like load management, so making sure like if we are training more than twice a week frequency-wise that we're not overdoing it, but you're gonna get more than enough out of twice a week. All right, big love for big lats. B1 here, it's gonna be a single arm lat pull down, so kind of structuring your back day, it's important to understand how our lats work, so we 
look at the lats. Lats are going to be a dominant extender of the shoulder. So when I say shoulder extension, I mean this is an arc of shoulder flexion. Pulling this elbow down to the hip, down the midline is shoulder extension. They don't go past in the hyperextension. So it's a key point is this hip right here. They're going shoulder extension. They stop right here. When we get into shoulder extension, if I flex my lat, it's actually going to flex the shoulder back to this neutral position right here. So it's shoulder extension, lats are going to be our dominant shoulder extender. We want a more neutral arm path. So we don't want to be going more from like in to out, like out here. It's going to be more rear delt. Something here in neutral. If we get a little bit of coming towards midline, that's fine. <coughs> A1 was the way to pull up. That was our main skill exercise for the day. Um, that's training a little bit upper back and a little bit of lats in their adduction component. Coming here, B1, we're still gonna be overhead a little bit, but we're getting our main lat output. So we got a little bit of lats from that skill exercise in A1. Now we're gonna get into our main output stuff. So B1's gonna be single arm lat pull down, more externally stabilized, pretty easy to set up, um, pretty straight shoulder extension. Going into C1, we're gonna do the chest supported row over there, more externally stabilized. That's gonna be upper back output. So kind of going skill, lat output, vertical, upper back output, horizontal, and then we're gonna thrust off some isolation stuff. That's a pretty good structure for most of your back days. It's like skill, something vertical, either lats or upper back, something horizontal, either lats or upper back. You can throw in like a wild card if you want to do some more back work and then go in like some rear delt isolation or like some bicep isolation to finish up. Talking about lats too, it's important to understand the ribcage roll and how our lats move. So our lats are gonna kind of span from the shoulder up here, down across the rib cage. They're gonna attach to a few points along our T-spine, lumbar, iliac. Um, it's important to understand, so don't even grab it. Let's go here. I want you to get like super extended right here. As we get like super extended, so like think like overall like thoracic uh, extension. We're actually gonna shorten our lat and give us less leverage to do shoulder extension. Now push your ribs back. You see as Joey pushes his ribs back, we're now we're getting more length to our lat. So if we can get into a more like ribs back position, we're gonna give better leverage to the lats to do lat things. It's also important to understand, we don't want our like rib cage moving around a lot as we're growing. So just like do some rows where you're like rocking back and forth. Right, so we want a stable base. We don't wanna be moving through like extension and flexion moving our rib cage around a lot. We want a stable base for our lats to do a lot of things. Stable base, more internal stability, more output. If we're in this more like global extended position, right, we're gonna have a more shortened lat. So with a more shortened lat, it's gonna be hard to get more short, right? So we wanna be able to get some like length and so we can contract that lat. So if we're stuck here, right, same as upper back. If we're stuck here and we're rowing, we're not actually getting any length to that muscle. So we're not gonna be able to contract it strongly or get a lot of mechanical entry to the muscle. So. Neutral position will allow us to actually get some length to it so that we can contract it so we can put mechanical tension into the muscle. All right, let's talk about using straps. Now, if we're only doing like one plate on something like this and our grip's alone there, it's probably an issue. If we're distinguishing between like two or three plates and like four or five plates, then it's not gonna be a grip strength issue. Like we're already plenty strong. We don't want our grip to be limiting our back development. So nothing wrong with using straps. We want a baseline level of grip strength, obviously, but after that point, like use straps, be able to move as much weight as we can with our back. We don't want our grip to limit our lat development. Our lats are much stronger than the muscles of our forearms. So you'll see here too, Joey's not overly flexing, overly extending. So his chest isn't really coming off the pad and he's not like arching over like it's a cat. Nice. Generalizing, generalizing upper back movements. This is a more like rare machine. You get cables, any machine where you can get an arm path where you're getting in the full retracted position, right? So something that's more of like 45-ish degrees of abduction. So this would be zero, this would be 90, somewhere in the middle. That's generally where we can get the most retraction from, the best arm path for upper back training. Um, getting in this machine a little bit too. Like the plate loaded machines. Load in the middle is gonna be more like mid-range. Load in the bottom is gonna be like more short and load in the top is gonna be more like length. And so basically, if we load more up top, it's gonna be harder in this length and position. If we load more on the bottom, it's gonna be harder here. Now, I don't see a lot of value in loading the bottom because at the end of the day, if we're loading mid-range or if we're loading the length and range, we're gonna fail in the short position first anyways. So you might as well be able to load those other ranges as well, get the most bang for our buck. You're not really gonna be able to distinguish a lot between rhomboids and traps when it comes to like scapular retraction. 
Um, like a little bit of elevation at the end is going to probably be a little bit more rhomboids because of the orientation of the fibers. But like at the end of the day, most of the rows that we're doing for upper back, it's going to be pretty equal rhomboids and traps. So mid thoracic, upper back, generally speaking, that's what we're training here. Getting like upper back training, kind of breaking that down arm path wise, we're going to get in a position where we can get full shoulder extension, full scapular retraction, right? So the muscles of upper back, I'm going to use Joey as a demo. Come over here, go. So all these muscles we're using up our upper back are gonna attach to the scapula. So Joey, like, reach up. What we're trying to do is trying to get full protraction, so protract, 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 and then full retraction. And making sure, again, that we're keeping a stable base of the rib cage. So we don't wanna be getting like thoracic extension, thoracic flexion. Stable base so that we can get full tension on those muscles. So Bitch. make it more simple for me, mid thoracic equals rhomboids, mid traps, or traps as a whole, but primarily mid traps. So very easy um, equation. Mid, mid thoracic equals mid traps plus rhomboids. I hear in our next video, Joey's gonna give away an autograph jersey. To one of our subscribers. <laughs> Oh, shit, Marty. No, you're good. No. <laughs> Two. All the way. Three. Four. Two more. Two more. Two more. Five. Let's go. <laughs> All right, finishing up, we're going to add in our isolation work. So just to recap for a second, we went skill work, so pull-ups. That can be your main, like, barbell row, dumbbell row. Anything you have, that's gonna be a technical failure, a technical limiter, put that first. Um, we went lat output, we went upper back output, almost vertical, almost horizontal. You can flip those, you can add in a wild card, put it one more back day. So for like a more upper back focus day, we can do two upper back movements. For more lat focus day, we can do two lat movements. Finishing up with our isolation works. Right here, we're gonna go rear delt flies. Um, rear delts, we're gonna abduct the shoulder, so bring it away from midline. Dumbbells, make a more short position movement. We're trying to Trying to get into like a more protracted position and just get purely uh, abduction out of this. You can use cables. You can use like a rear delt fly, like a reverse pack deck. Um, there's a big, big kick on like getting at the exact like orientation of the fibers. Probably not gonna make a huge difference for rear delts. So anything between like 90 degrees to 45 degrees, probably more than fine. All right, finishing up here, the rest of our isolation work. We're gonna do some bicep stuff. Um, we're probably gonna do a full arm day on like bicep, tricep stuff, so I'm not gonna get super deep into that. But generally speaking, if you have a day where you do more stuff overhead, we're already getting exposure to a lot of pulling from overhead. Get in the shoulder extension, do something that's more like a low cable curl or something that's more like more mid-range for biceps. Um, you do something that's more upper back focus, we're getting in a lot of shoulder extension. Finish off with something that's more overhead in nature or more like mid-range shoulder flexion up here for biceps. And we're kind of getting the whole arc of, um, of like shoulder flexion, shoulder extension. Today, we're gonna finish up high cable curl. I had a flex day yesterday where we trained arms, so this is gonna be the least loadable variation. Get a little bit more frequency without overdoing it on our biceps. Yeah, we hit arms yesterday, so we're getting a little bit of pump. Just trying to get some blood flow in there, so instead of just being redundant, we're gonna be weak in the movement anyway. So this is gonna be more stability of the shoulder. Uh, use the bicep for what it's actually used for versus just being a meathead. Look at that. Oh. Oh. Reach a little more. Two things, or what first thing? What's your tip for a big back? Mm -hmm. Yeah, get more of your beard in here. Tips for a big back? You have two back tips. What are they going to be? Big keys for a big back by sure, brand. Make sure you're not just weight, just Uh huh. And also, like, you got to work. You got to work the rows, and you got to work the, uh, the vertical points too. So make sure. Keep that elbow in line with what, wherever you're trying to work. So if you're trying to pull down, keep those, uh, keep your elbow in line with those muscle, muscle fibers and line up the arm path with the fibers of the muscle so you get the great um, Other than that, you 
Yeah. yeah. Train hard, eat good, know the difference between upper back and lat training. Get overhead, get horizontal, get some variation. Let's see, Brand just said in 30 seconds what it took me and Joey an hour to say, so we'll finish with that. So, bigger beard, bigger the back. Small back, small beard. Medium beard, medium back. Big beard, big back. The bigger your beard, the bigger the back.